So if I want to get rid of these two clips, I think this train clip is kind of going on too long now. Um, what I can do is I can delete them. I can select those two train clips and hit the backspace or delete key. Or let me undo that. Or I can select them and right click them and click enable this clip. And so what that'll do is it'll, it won't delete the clip, but it'll kind of just turn them off. So if I decide that I want to maybe use them later, I can go back and enable the clip, which will turn it back on. So when it's disabled, it kind of grays out here. So I'm going to extend the chameleon to the end of that loop again. And now I've got the idea. I like the way the chameleon's eyes move. What if the eyes moved at each different loop? How would I do that? I'm going to cut this video. So I'm going to take the blade tool kind of cut it right where this new sound is happening so I can see that the waveform kind of gets bigger right here and that's why I say boop so I'm gonna cut this chameleon video right at that boop and then I want to find a point where the eye moves again and uh, I'm gonna go back to my arrow tool drag it in and I'm going to move it forward. Now it kind of seems like this uh, chameleon's eye is moving to the sound of that, uh, that beep boop boop. I'm going to find that boop and I'm going to make another cut with the blade tool here and I'm going to find a point where the chameleon's eye moves again. Maybe right here. Select my arrow tool, pull it in. I like that. We'll edit. Another thing I want to go over um, is the use of markers to kind of tell you, as a reminder, where you want certain events to happen. So with this abstract uh, field recording that I have, um, there's certain points that I think could, uh, where something visual could happen at the, uh, the point in the audio. So I can see the waveforms, but I also want to be able to mark it off. So uh, often when I'm editing to music or sound, uh, I like to set markers. And the easiest way to do that is to press the M key if you scroll or scrub anywhere in your timeline and press the M key, you'll notice like this little blue marker will show up. So these are really useful tools when you want to do some rhythmic editing. Say you're editing some music and you want the image to change when the beat changes. Um, just while you're listening, you can go ahead and place markers and those will serve as just uh, visual cues as to where that music change happens. So for example, when I play in the beginning here, I'm just gonna press the M key as I hear certain things that I like. So I'm gonna press the space bar to press play. So um, these are all the markers that I laid down, and uh, these are kind of roughly where I imagined that I would want the image to change in some way. And so now, without thinking too much, I'm going to take this train video, and I'm going to enable it, and I'm just going to move it to where one of these markers starts, maybe here. And since we're messing around with composite modes, let's go and just, ooh, looks cool. Just gonna mess with that one and really start to layer this stuff together. I'm not really gonna overthink it. Um, I'm only I've only got about four videos here, but if you wanted to use maybe like ten videos, you could really get something cool and interesting going on. Um, just one one thing to be aware about: the more layers you have, the more work your computer will have to do. Um, so if you're working with an older machine, it might struggle to play multiple videos at one time. So like in this example, we have four layers of videos stacked on top of each other. 
I'm using a fairly fast machine now, but if I were using one of my slower computers, it might have some trouble actually playing back four layers of video stacked on top of one another. So just keep that in mind. If your computer can handle it, then great. But if your computer is struggling, maybe try to keep the amount of layered videos down. So I won't go too crazy with this. One thing to note is that DaVinci Resolve also does require a fairly fast machine in order to run. But the things that we're going over here can apply to like any video editing software. So if you're using uh, Final Cut Pro, if you're on a Mac, or say iMovie, the same ideas will apply. And it's basically taking uh, some source video, defining the moments that you think are interesting, setting in and out points at those moments, and then dragging that to the timeline. The philosophy behind this, this method of collage will be the same no matter what software you use. The biggest difference might just be the interface of the software or where things are located or how you do certain things. The thing that is interesting to learn is like, what if you wanted a layer to or video layer to fade in or fade out. Right now you can kind of see when this train layer comes in, it comes in abruptly. Uh, it just kind of flashes on the screen. So if I wanted that to have a smoother entrance, I could set it to uh, fade in. And one way to easily do that is to click the edge of a layer and add a cross dissolve. So I could add a six frame cross dissolve. And what that'll do is it will create a little fade here. So I want to zoom in and one way to do that is to press the control plus keys or up here in this little toolbar you can press the minus key to zoom out the plus key to zoom in or drag this little, little ball there so when I zoom in I can see now that uh, I've got this fade that comes on so now when I play it this uh, train layer will fade on rather than just pop on. And uh, I can take that fade and I can pull it out by the edge and make it a longer fade or a shorter fade. I kind of like this, like this long fade though. Let's see what that looks like. And I liked how those sunflowers popped on right as that sound changed. And so I kind of want that to happen again right here, kind of where I left that marker. Uh, you can also adjust markers if you feel the need to. So if I actually wanted to move it here, I can just click that marker and drag it. You can also name markers. So by default markers are just named uh, numerically marker 1, 2, and so forth. But if you click a marker, double click it, you can give it a name. Or I can say sunflower pop. I could even change the color. I could even write some notes about that. I could even spell it correctly or give it keywords, whatever, done. If you want to remove a marker, you can also double click it and click the remove marker button. I see that the chameleon kind of pops on here. I think I want it to pop on right where that marker is. So I'm going to drag that chameleon layer right to the beginning of that marker and let's see. That's cool. Um, something happened now. This train layer kind of ended abruptly. Uh, so maybe I want to extend that train layer there. And a cool thing that you can do when two layers are side by side like this, you can click right between the middle and you can add a cross dissolve and it should dissolve between the layers. There you go. So this is starting to look more like a collage. Now we're layering video and having certain elements pop on at different times according to the audio. And it's just getting real abstract and weird, just like I like it. It looks like I have a rotation on this chameleon. I don't think I did that on purpose. And then I can see here when I click the chameleon in the, ins in the uh, inspector, it's got like a rotation of negative 15. Um, that was accidental. I'm going to hit zero. It's going to pop back into place. And then I'm going to re-enable my other layer. I'm going to stretch that fade back out and see if that changes it. Thing. Let's just put, on, put in some videos of worms. Just cause. I'm gonna go with this close up. Okay. Let's, let's get the high quality footage of worms. Let's go with the 1920 by 1080. It's the media pool. Import media. Uh, find worms. Import. Um, double click the worms footage. This is pretty gross looking. 
looks like somebody's compost heap, but let's see how it works. I'm going to set an endpoint right before that worm reaches out. Out point right there. I'm going to just drag this in here anywhere. All right. Oops. And so I think this is interesting because we have this weird contrast between like nature, but then we've also got this really urban city environment. And what does that mean? I don't know. These are the, the images that I chose. They came from somewhere. They came from these keywords that I came up with. Maybe there's some meaning behind it. But for now, this is just a creative exercise to inspire the next project or the next thought. So that's an introduction to, to editing, kind of selecting the the shots or the images that you want, sequencing them in time. We, we learned how to change the speed of a clip. We learned how to play things backwards about composite modes, different transformations that you can do.